is Laura, and welcome back to Brown Guy. So last episode, we cleared Hiyoko and... If the killer was luring Hiyoko into a trap, then something that was used there might be a clue. Do you mean the letter? No, it was probably the gummy. Huh? Candy can be a clue? When you woke up, was the gummy already there? Oh, now that you mention it, I feel like it wasn't. Just as I thought. Just as you thought? If the killer planted evidence while Hiyoko was there, she would have thrown it away if she found it. Which means the gummy was placed inside the closet after Hiyoko fled from the beach house? The killer returned to the scene of the crime? After I left? They wouldn't have to do something that troublesome as long as they hid somewhere within the beach house. That's impossible! There's nowhere to hide! I even glanced inside the shower room as I was running away, but there was nobody there! Then, does that mean the killer came back? Hmm... I wonder... At any rate, the solution to that problem is connected to what really happened. That's what I think. You guys ready to go snowboarding? Killer hiding with you. It's all coming together. Do you think the killer might have been hiding? You spent all that time thinking just to say something so pointless. How disappointing. Didn't I just say there was nowhere to hide? Do I have to explain it in another language so you can understand? Sorry, I don't speak of... Her personality got a hell of a lot more forceful once she stopped being a suspect. No, there should have been a place for them to hide. A place you didn't look, Yoko. What are you saying? Stop being annoying or I'm gonna make Akane bop you on the head and shut you up for good! Here! 
killer was probably hiding in the closet. The closet? That's where I was locked up! After you woke up, you said you rushed out of there, right? And you probably didn't look inside the closet very carefully. But could two people even hide in such a small place? And without Hyoko knowing? That's why the killer made sure to arrange a hiding place. Here! What about the surfboard case in the closet? I'm pretty sure they could have hidden in there. Huh? Inside the surfboard case? With the shelf it was on. It was pretty messy, don't you think? Two surfboards were stacked on the top shelf. And there were surfboards that weren't even in the case. The killer probably did that on purpose to secure a hiding place. Because we haven't been on this island that long. So the closet shouldn't have been that messy. I think. Then... The killer was close to me during that time? Yeah. They were quietly holding their breath and hiding very close to you. It's kind of like... In for a penny, in for a pound, so to speak. But don't you mean, it's always darkest under the lighthouse? <laughs> I shouldn't say things I don't understand, like, so to speak. Anyway, the killer hid silently, and after making sure Hyoko left, they finally left the surfboard case. I agree with that as well. Seriously, nobody asked what you think. There's no way the killer would leave Hyoko by herself if they were trying to frame her. If Hyoko was left alone and ruined the evidence the killer had planted, it would have messed up their plan. Instead, it makes more sense to think that the killer was hiding in the beach house. Watch him. Say whatever you want, even if you didn't ask. All right, if you don't want to friggin' get punched, just stand still and let me punch you! <laughs> oh, you shut up. Then... Grit your teeth! Sorry, Akane. It's not like that. Hey, Monokuma. Can I ask you about something that seems strange to me? I believe Prince Shotoku was from the future. A man from the future is always directing the flow of history. I'll listen to your story about men from the future some other time. As I recall, the body discovery announcement is made when three or more people discover a body, right? Is the killer also included among those three or more people? Yeah, that's true, but, uh, well, something like that is basically what it's supposed to be. You don't sound very articulate. Jeez, you're pretty annoying for noticing something like that. I know it sounds like an excuse, but the body discovery announcement isn't supposed to be used for deduction. It's intended to create a fair trial. It's supposed to let everyone know a body has been found. So you're saying it's unfortunate that I used it for deduction? I understand your excuse, but depending on who actually found the body, it's possible that your three or more people rule could be deadly. Well, as long as I keep things ambiguous, I can respond to situations with some flexibility. Flexibility? So what about this time? Is it three people including the killer or not? Jeez, fine, fine! You want me to say it? It doesn't include the killer this time, okay? All done. Which means three people other than the killer discovered Mahiru's body. What's wrong with that? Nothing. I just, I just thought, thought it was somewhat, somewhat strange. strange. More importantly, let's, let's get, get back, back to our original topic. You're the one who went on a tangent. Uh, um, we were just saying the killer was hiding in the surfboard case, right? Right, Mikan, thank you. For and after Hyoko ran away, the killer got to enjoy the simple life of destroying evidence. However, before we proceed any further, there's something... The killer blocked the roadside door with Mahiru's body before Hyoko ran away. Now that you mention it, that mystery hasn't been solved yet. It's going to be all right. If you guys have come this far, I'm sure you can discover that answer too. Now, let's start the... Stop talking.
What did the killer do with the blood on their body? Maybe they simply washed it off. They couldn't use the shower, right? So washing it off would have been impossible. They didn't have to use the shower. Oh, what about the wetsuits in the closet? Maybe they wore one when they moved the body. If they use something other than the shower... What did they do with the bloody wetsuit? They cut it up and flush. As someone who flushes their shit every morning, I can declare it would definitely clog the toilet! I don't know that. Maybe it's the other way around? Perhaps someone other than the killer moved the body? Maybe they were able to wash it off. What did the killer do with the blood on their body? Maybe they simply want they couldn't use the shower, right? So washing it No, that's wrong! If they just needed to wash off the blood, they didn't necessarily have to use the shower. They could have just as easily used something else. Something other than the shower. <laughs> like what? See. Drinks inside the refrigerator. Couldn't the killer have used those to wash off the blood? I see through it. In theory, that's impossible. But why? Try to remember the refrigerator carefully, and then you will understand that there's no possible way the drinks in the refrigerator were used. It's true there were drinks in the beach house, which, however, try one bottle drink, it wouldn't be enough to wash off the blood. I can't back down! We can't assume they used just one drink. They could have used a bunch of them to wash it off. <laughs> Didn't I say it was impossible? There were there were only flavored drinks with colored dots. If you use it, the blood will come off. It will especially that alone would break suspicion. <laughs> Didn't I say it was impossible? There were no water bottles in the refrigerator. There were only flavored drinks. If you use those to wash blood off. It will leave an Arab especially if you use that alone with great suspicion. <laughs> Didn't I say it was? There were no water bottles in the river. Allow me to cut through those words! No, there were water bottles inside the refrigerator. How many times? That was after the incident, right? But before the incident, there were water bottles in the fridge. And the killer took all of those water bottles and used them to wash the blood off their body. So you're saying the water bottles were gone? Because they were all used? That's a logical fallacy. It's not a fallacy. There should have been evidence inside the trash can. Evidence like a lot of thrown away plastic water bottles. Isn't that right, Chia? Ah, you're right. These bottles look like they may have been filled with water. Well, now that you mention it, when I went to the beach house a few days ago, I feel like I drank one of those plastic water bottles. Huh? You should have said so sooner. Then, the plastic water bottles were used in place of the shower. Dousing your body with lots of water bottles is such a simple and easy to understand explanation. They soaked their entire body with a bunch of plastic water bottles. It seems you've realized who the killer is. See? See? Just, Just as, as I, I thought. thought. Hold on. You, you, you know who the killer is? <laughs> is that true? Let, Let me, me ask. ask. Who, who might, might that be? You're the only one! Heck out. 
Is it you? Hey! What are you being quiet for? They're accusing you of being the killer! Then I should ask you this. Why do you believe I'm the killer? I remember when we were all meeting up to go to the beach. Your appearance when you came to the diner. If the killer really did wash the blood off with water bottles, they'd have to drench their entire body. But there were no towels in the beach house, and it would have taken a while for the water to fully air dry. So you said you went swimming so you'd have a cover story. Don't just stay silent! Say something! Hold on, you bastard! You saw her at the diner! You never saw her near the beach house, right? So maybe she really was swimming! No one even saw her swimming. No. I saw, I saw her. her. Huh? Uh, after, after I ran, I ran into you into bastards at the diner, diner I crossed, crossed paths, paths with her on my way home. home. So, so, so there's, there's no, no doubt. doubt. She, she would have arrived at the diner, diner from the opposite, opposite direction, direction of the beach house. house. Hold on. That's, That's strange. strange. Didn't, you Didn't you just say, say this earlier? You told me you didn't see anyone. Don't try to tell me you forgot about that. Not so fast! It's too soon to decide she's a killer! We haven't established how the killer was able to leave the beach house! Now that you mention it, The roadside door was blocked! And if it's impossible to leave from the beach side without leaving footprints, then how the fuck did the killer escape? Um, why are you all fired up, Fuyuhiko? You're not the suspect. Pekko is. Who cares about that? Answer me! If you have an explanation, then show me what you got! We might have an answer. Huh? Do you really? This mystery seems unsolved. Yes, if Pekko is the killer, then I might just have an answer to that mystery. See. Then let's hear this alleged method of escaping the beach house. First, let's establish how the killer escaped. I see! If the roadside and beachside doors aren't an option, the only other thing I can think of is... Well, nothing really. Except that small window in the shower room. <laughs> Don't you know how high that window is? There's no way Pekko could have reached it. But what if, for instance, she got help from someone? She might have reached it by riding someone's shoulders, but then that person would have been left behind. Is it possible an object was used? A rope, for instance? And what happened to the rope after they used it? And don't say something stupid like they threw it outside. Of course not. That would violate the school trip rule. Littering is prohibited. Even if it might be evidence, rules are still rules. You see? There's no way they'd be able to escape from that window. No, they just have to use an object. Chiaki, don't fall asleep on us! We just said they couldn't use an object! You did? I thought you were saying they couldn't dispose of an object. I see! You don't have to throw it away if you can just hide it somewhere on your body. Huh? Pekka was wearing a swimsuit, remember? Where would she even hide an object? And if you say she hid it in her special place, I'll stab you in yours! No! Please don't be violent!
Carry that bamboo sword, sword on your back, back at all times, times right? right? If I recall, I recall correctly, correct, you, you had, had it then, too. too. Despite, Despite the fact, fact that you had a swimsuit on, you were still, you were still wearing, wearing your bamboo, bamboo sword. sword. Uh, are you are saying you she used, used that bamboo sword, sword to escape through the window? window? Yeah. Hecko used, used that bamboo sword, sword as a step stool step and escaped out the window. A sword as a step stool? You see? I knew it! I knew it was a ninja! Didn't I tell ya? A ninja could have climbed that easily! Ninjas know a climbing trick where they lean their sword against a wall and use the handguard as a step stool. Whoa! Just like a Japanese ninja! Miss Sonia, ninjas only exist in Japan. Well, it is a bamboo sword, but I'm sure a slender girl like Pekko could easily use it to climb. Well, Pekko? Do you have anything to say? PTA! Hold on a sec, you bastard! You're saying she used her sword as a step stool and went out the fucking window? Then what about the sword? It would have been left in the shower room and she wouldn't have been able to recover it, dumbass! Who are you, Hiko? Why do you even care? Shut up! Just shut the fuck up and answer me! If you have an answer, then fucking give it to me! If she used the bamboo sword as a step stool, it would have been left behind! Got proof, you bastard! That's obviously impossible! Shut up, shut up! Shut up! Don't fuck with me! 
got proof, you bastard! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Don't fuck with me! Got proof, you bastard! That's obviously impossible! Bastard! Got proof, you bastard! I'll see your fucking organs! You're pissing me off! You're pissing me off! Bastard! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Got proof, you bastard! That's obviously impossible! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Don't fuck with me! If she used the bamboo sword as a step stool, it this is the end! If she used her bamboo sword as a step stool, she could have recovered it with her sword back. When she leaned her sword against the wall to use as a step stool, she tied her sword back to it. And after she climbed up to the window, as long as she hauled the bag up toward her, she would have been able to recover her bamboo sword. <gasps> I see. Not just the bamboo sword, but even the sword bag, too. She used them both to escape. Hakane said she's like a ninja, but it's nothing as silly as that. Simply put, only Pekko could have performed this feat. An escape plan befitting of the ultimate swordswoman. Even so, how disappointing. If you'd only let me work with you, it would have been an even greater plan. No, oh, you just back off! <laughs> Hold on! You're just making assumptions! You, you don't have any proof. I won't accept this unless there's proof! Got it, you bastard! It's fine. Huh? I said it's fine. Saying anything more would just be an exercise in futility. Among flowers, the cherry blossom. Among men, the samurai. I commend your decisiveness, at least. Very well. If you admit it, this ends now. Let's cast our votes. Agreed. Hurry up and vote. Uh, hold on. Let me confirm one thing first. Can it wait until after the voting? This is important, and it relates to the voting. It's about Pekko's motive. My motive? In the end? You had no connection to the events depicted in Twilight Syndrome murder case, right? Then, why did you kill Mahiru? Hmm. So it's about that. Let's see. If I must answer that question, I must say it was for the sake of justice. Justice? In order to protect the justice of this world. I do not sully my hands to satisfy personal grudges. There is only one reason I kill. For the sake of protecting justice. What are you saying? Justice is what makes humans human. It's a virtue that human beings should be proud of. Justice is the eternal sun and the enduring moon, the protective father. And the smiling mother. Uh, hello! Earth to Pekka! If justice ever disappeared from this world, the world would immediately freeze and people's smiles would vanish. I will not allow that! It, it's fine, just stop it! Justice must always be there to guide us, to shine bright above our head. I'm telling you to stop it! So I must fight! I must continue to fight to protect justice. This is... Could she be? As the light of justice shines upon my mask, I expose the hearts of malevolent evil. Justice complete! The center of justice that is pierced by justice. The lead star of justice that shines in the night sky. That would be me. Sparkling justice! Now then, let's execute justice! 
What? What, what, what the fuck? fuck? Hango, what are you doing? I am Sparkling Justice. In the name of Sparkling Shining Justice, I have come to deliver justice. What's going on? What's this? Pecco finally snapped! Everyone, please be careful! Sparkling Justice is a serial killer who claims to be an ally of justice. Clad in her various hero masks, she is a serial killer who exclusively targets other criminals. She is supposed to be... But... Huh? An ally of justice? So that's why you're wearing a mask! This mask is the dividing line. Just like various items, the sun is revered because it lies just beyond your grasp. Justice should also be the same. I don't get it, but, but this is becoming really crazy. This, this is turning out to be a surprising turn of events. Now is not the time for you to be sleeping. Take a look. This, huh? Sleep popping? So what's your answer to my previous question? Why did you kill Mahiru? This world must always be bathed in the light of justice. I must not allow even one shadow. Evil must be eliminated immediately. No matter what. I must not overlook evil. Evil? Are you saying Mahiru is... If you knew about that incident, then you must have played the game. Am I right? And because of that, I was able to find the killer's accomplice hiding on this island like a sewer rat. Then... the reason you killed Mahiru was... To protect justice, of course. In order to protect justice, I have become its merciless sword and executed justice. Holy crap! She's such a stereotypical psychopath! <laughs> She's so gross! Pekko, is this your true identity? My true identity? <laughs> I have already forgotten who I am. It just shows my determination. My determination to protect by throwing away what's most important. I'm willing to become anybody to shower this world with justice. <laughs> oh, I can't stand this anymore. Let's just end this farce already. Let's go over this incident.
Here's everything that happened in this case. The incident began this morning when Mahiru spoke to Hyoga. Mahiru most likely played Twilight Syndrome murder case. The video game provided to us as the motive. She probably wanted to discuss it with someone else who also appeared in the game as a character. Kyoko accepted Mahiru's invitation, and they promised to have a more detailed conversation about it later. However, someone else overheard their exchange. The killer. The killer eavesdropped on their conversation and used their promise to devise a specific murder plan. By preparing a specific item, they planned it. That item was the letters. They sent fake letters to both Mahiru and Hyo. The letter Mahiru received told her to come to the beach house at 2.30 p.m. And the letter Hyoko received told her to come to the beach house at exactly 2 p.m. By providing different times, the killer was able to lure them to the beach house separately. Hyoko totally trusted that letter, showed up at the beach house at 2 p.m., just like it said, and was drugged into unconsciousness by the killer lying in wait. After putting Hyoko to sleep, the killer immediately hid her inside the closet so they could frame her as the killer later. At 2.30 p.m., Mahiru arrived at the beach house. She was completely unaware that she'd been targeted for murder. Approaching her from behind, the killer struck the defenseless Mahiru with a specific weapon, the metal bat that was left at the scene of the crime. The bat was brought down onto the back of Mahiru's head, and with that, she took her last breath. According to Mikan's autopsy, Mahiru died instantly, so she probably never knew who killed him. With that, the killer achieved their goal of killing Mahiru, and began to tamper with the crime scene. They dragged Mahiru's body so that it blocked the door leading to the road. Also, the mask found at the scene of the crime was something the killer personally left. I'm not really sure why. My guess is, it's something similar to a calling card. That's how the crime scene we discovered was created. However, by moving Mahiru's body, the killer got blood splatter on him. Plus, the shower room had no water because it was out of order, so they couldn't wash it off. But the killer expected something like that to happen. Instead of the shower, the killer used something else to wash the blood off their body. They used plastic water bottles that were inside the beach house refrigerator. We can assume they carried the bottles to the shower room before the sequence of events had happened. In place of shower, they washed the blood off their body with water bottles instead. However, they had no choice but to dispose of the empty bottles in the beach house's trash can. Littering is against the rules and it would have taken too much time to throw them away somewhere else. After the killer washed off the blood, they hid in a specific spot inside the closet Kyoko was in. The killer hid inside the surfboard case that they had already emptied beforehand. After some time had passed, the sleeping drug used on Hyoko wore off and she woke up. I can imagine how badly Hyoko must have panicked when she came out of the closet. I mean, she made plans to see Mahiru, who lay dead right in front of her. From the shock and panic of being considered a murder suspect, Hyoko fled from the beach house. Because of that, she left footprints in the sand. Everything was a trap set by the killer to frame her. After Hyoko left, the killer finally came out of the surfboard case and placed a gun that they brought with them to shift our suspicion toward Hyoko. Ironically, placing that gummy is what helped clear our suspicion toward Hyoko. Finally, the killer began preparing to escape from the beach house. They couldn't risk leaving their footprints in the sand, so they escaped the, the small window in the shower room. However, that window is rather high up and can't be reached easily. The bamboo sword they always carry with them. The killer took the bamboo sword out of its bag, tied the bag to the sword's handle, 
and use the sword as a step stool to reach the small window while holding the sword bag in their hand. As long as they're able to reach the window, all they had to do was pull the bag to retrieve the sword. And so the killer left the beach house and appeared before us as if nothing had happened. But their wet hair and swimsuit didn't dry right away. There also weren't any towels at the beach house. So when the killer met up with us, they said they had been swimming for a while as an excuse. So how about it? This is the truth behind the incident you caused. Isn't that right, Peko Peko Yama? I see. And what of it? She's like, totally cool with it. I haven't done anything to be ashamed of. What are you saying? You killed Mothru! Wrong! I punished evil in the name of justice. That's no reason to condemn me. Whatever. Let's hurry up and vote so we can freaking kill this weird creep. There's no way you can kill me. Justice can never be killed. You should, you should all know, know that, that as well. What, what are you saying? To protect what's most important to you, you must be prepared to throw away something equally important. Understand? I don't get it. I don't get it at all. Then I shall be direct. Justice must carry on in order to keep justice. To keep me alive, you all must give up your lives. Are you serious? It's not serious. It's justice! If I fall here, who will combat the evils of this world? Now, follow your hearts of justice that reside within you all, and save my life to protect justice! Hurry, and carry on justice! Give me a break! Who's gonna die for you? If we let Pekko go, we're all gonna get killed! For the sake of grand justice, a few sacrifices are unavoidable. <laughs> Don't worry. The justice that you give your life to protect will never go to waste. I can't stand her anymore. Let's vote already. Um, however, before we do that... Onakuma, the vote! Hurry up and let us vote already! I'm away! Ah, he finally woke up! I've heard your story! Well, I wasn't listening, but who cares? Now then, please pull the lever in front of you and cast your Who will be chosen as the black... <laughs> Go ahead and subscribe for more and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.